Tis the season, hurricane season. When the newest storms roll in from the Atlantic, it's hard not to notice the very human names they're given. Michael, Andrew, Maria. I've always heard the hurricanes are named in alphabetical order as they appear, but then I noticed, for example, a hurricane that started with the letter D, closely followed by another hurricane starting with the letter J. Are there that many hurricanes going on? Turns out, it's not so simple. There's one misconception we need to address, that hurricanes even receive names to begin with. Every hurricane starts out as just a tropical storm. Once that storm reaches sustained winds of 39 miles per hour, it receives a cool name. For example, Hurricane Katrina was once just Tropical Storm Katrina. Once sustained winds reach speeds of 74 miles per hour, the storm reaches full-on hurricane status, and it carries on with its name. Naming hurricanes is nothing new. Residents of the Caribbean islands have been doing it for centuries. At first, simply after whoever was the Roman Catholic saint of the day whenever the hurricane was formed. So what if two hurricanes hit on the same day in different years? They would be referred to as Hurricane Gobnate the first and Hurricane Gobnate the second. All right, seems pretty simple. How can we f it up? Early meteorologists in the US decided it was a good idea to call hurricanes by their coordinates of formation and all their latitudinal and longitudinal glory. This didn't last long because have you ever had to say coordinates? Besides, numbers couldn't effectively communicate the tragedy and devastation brought on by a hurricane. Not like... During World War II, military meteorologists working in the Pacific began giving tropical storms women's names. After all, everyone was down to talk shit about Fifi and Janice. The practice stuck so well, the National Hurricane Center adopted it in 1953 for hurricanes originating in the Atlantic. That caused a huge boost for public awareness of hurricanes. In 1978 and 79, men's names were added in, and the genders of the hurricane names alternated back and forth. If it's an even year, the first hurricane is a man's name. If it's an odd year, it starts with a woman's name. This is the system's final form as we know it. Today, the World Meteorological Organization maintains six lists of 21 names, a list for each year to get reused every six years. But there's only 21 names, so who's left out? Well, if you're a Quincy, Olga, Xavier, Yolanda, or Zoe, congratulations. You're never gonna have to share your name with a tropical storm, much less a hurricane. Then there are names that get removed from the lists. Just like certain jerseys and the rich guys who wore them, the really good ones get retired. Names of hurricanes that deal a great amount of death and destruction, such as Irma, Katrina, and Sandy, are retired to avoid insensitivity to the victims. And sometimes, they just remove names because they feel like it. So what happens if there are more than 21 tropical storms in a year? Once the last hurricane name on the list is used, the names are taken directly from the Greek alphabet. So after Hurricane Whitney, for example, would be Hurricane Alpha, Beta, and so on. And that's just the Atlantic naming system. The others all have aspects that make them unique. The Eastern North Pacific system includes names starting with X, Y, and Z in their lists, but they're kind of redundant. The Central North Pacific hurricanes have four lists with only 12 names on each. This system also differs from the others in that the lists are used in their entirety, one after the other, independent of the calendar year. So I'll throw some of these lists up for you guys. Let me know in the comments which tropical storm name stands out to you the most. And don't forget to share this video with your friends if it made you say, huh. Till next time.